It's a show where we explore all the key happenings from the AI world to see what really matters. And this week, I'll pick up where I left off the previous week, and it's with AI video generation. Last week, we featured Kling AI, Chinese company developing generative AI models for text-to-video generation. And where they push the boundaries of the technology is with the length of videos generated. So usually we see just a few second videos generated. They generated videos up to a minute and a half long. But this week, I want to talk about two companies which also released new models or new products this week. First one is Luma AI. And they released Dream Machine. It can generate videos or frames very quickly, one frame per second or 120 frames in 120 seconds. It generates generates videos based on text and based on images. And what is good about this one, it is freely available. So anyone can test it out. But with videos, what matters more than the stats I just shared is what is the actual quality of videos. And here are a few examples shared by them created with Dream Machine. It looks pretty impressive, but I do have to add it has been in the public's hands for, for a few days and the reviews are mixed. But still, this is very impressive and the, the, the fact that it's publicly available is very good. The second one is from Runway ML, new model Gen 3 Alpha, and it is a new model trained on their new infrastructure designed for large-scale multimodal training. So a few months ago or last year, we talked about how infrastructure is, is a bottleneck in developing new models. This now no longer seems to be the case. And this new model, it will power their text-to-video, image-to-video, and text-to-image tools. And I cannot do justice to this one with words, so let me show a few videos. So here is something similar to Sora or a similar thematic subtle reflection of a woman on the window of a train moving at hyperspeed in in a Japanese city. Again, another shot, abandoned European street, and then an underwater shot of a suburban neighborhood. Very impressive. I think this is at the level of Sora and Google Veo. So what this shows is that other companies are also able to get or train very high performing models. So it's definitely not that just the biggest ones have the have the best performing models, but other companies are coming up and this field is really expanding and growing very fast. And then the next one is related to video generation. It is image generation, stable diffusion, three medium from Stability AI, most sophisticated image generation model to date. This is how they describe it. It can run on consumer devices. So again, this is the trend that we're seeing. Models are now small enough, efficient enough so that they can run on enterprise tier GPUs and, and end devices. Weights, model weights are available, non-commercial license. Otherwise, it is accessible through their API. Again, what's more important, the quality of images it can generate, and it's pretty good. So on the left, we see photo of a baking tray with words. Words is one issue for these models, but I guess they have nailed this part. And on the right, we see magic potions, and then the last one, perhaps the most impressive one, three dogs wearing coats. So this is looking very, very good. Now I want to share a couple of research breakthroughs. The first one is the prompt report, a systematic survey of prompting techniques. Now, prompting, it's a way to communicate with large language models, and you need to be effective at doing so. Poor prompting will result in poor answers. And the issue with prompting was it was very hard to evaluate. It was very hard to know what you're doing wrong or what you're doing right and what you should change. And a colleague of mine some time ago, he described it that prompting is closer to hocus pocus than it is to engineering. And I think this was truly the case. But now researchers are working on it to, so that that will no longer be the case. And this is the most comprehensive review or survey of prompting techniques. And amongst the authors, we have researchers from Stanford, OpenAI, Microsoft, so some of the biggest players. And what they present is a taxonomy of prompting techniques. It includes 58 text-only prompts, 44 other modalities, and they extend this to agents as well. And I want to show what does this taxonomy look like. This is a part of this taxonomy. We see zero-shot prompting, few-shot thought generation, ensembling, self-critique is also their decomposition. And then you see specific techni techniques under that. They also benchmark compare the techniques. This was tested on the MMLU benchmark. And we see the comparison and accuracy between zero shot and then let's say few shot chain of thought prompting. So this is very interesting. This is a very valuable resource for practitioners who are working on prompting or who want to approach prompting in a more structured manner. And now the most impressive announcement of this week. We featured a few robotics 
articles in the past few weeks toward autonomous driving by musculoskeletal humanoid. And yes, it's a robot driving a car. So let's show a video of how this looks like and what the robot is capable of doing here. So it is operating a vehicle as a human would, hands on the steering wheel, it is making a turn. It can also accelerate, it can brake. Again, everything the same as if a human was driving this car. It operates both hands on the wheels, it can turn the wheel. It learns through time how to do that better. So this is this is looking very impressive. And then perhaps the most impressive thing is awareness of the surroundings, obviously crucial for safety. And what you can see here is human recognition in the side mirror. So the robot can recognize objects, not just cars, traffic lights, but even humans in the side mirror. This is very, very impressive. And then what it can also do, finer movements, rotating a key, pulling a handbrake and operating a blinker. So this is all as a, if a human was, was driving this car. And we see how complex of a task driving a car really is. And this is the future. Highly, highly capable humanoid robots. And now imagine translating that, that to different environments. What can such solutions do for us? And then I want to finish this week with announcements from the biggest players in the domain. First one from the from NVIDIA. NVIDIA, they release open synthetic data generation pipeline for training large language models. It is a family of models designed to generate synthetic data sets for training large language models. And we see highly capable models trained on almost exclusively synthetic data. So now NVIDIA wants to make that easier for developers. Misrel AI, French AI startup, they raised 640 million Series B. They're now at 6 billion valuation. Former NSA head joins OpenAI board and safety committee. So OpenAI is still trying to convince us that safety is indeed a priority for them. And then lastly, Databricks is expanding their Mosaic AI platform to help enterprises build LLM-powered applications. And this is it for this week. Thank you, and until next week.